If you're coming from a Windows background, chances are when you think of compressed files, you think of zip files. You zip them and you unzip them when you need to decompress or extract the contents of it. And zip is great because it will compress files, it will compress folders, it will compress folders of files, and then you just distribute them and use them. The world of Linux is a little bit more complicated. You can use zip and unzip. However, there are other tools that we use more often usually for some reason. I'm not sure why. Uh, and you need to understand them. They're not really complicated. There's just more options with Linux and we're gonna cover them in this video. So with Linux, compression and archiving are two separate steps. And we actually go about that by starting with the tar command. Now tar actually stands for tape archive, but it's kind of a cool word and it's stuck around. What we used to do is you would take your file system with all of its files and it would just literally write them out all to a tape backup. And then you would take that tape and, you know, to a remote site. And if you had to restore it, you could write it from the tape back to a file system. Well, we still use the tar command, but instead of writing it to a tape, we'll write it to a file. So all you're doing is writing files next to each other, like end to end, into a single file. So it doesn't offer any compression, but it allows you to deal with, you know, hundreds or thousands of files as just one file that you have to worry about compressing and backing up. Anyway, let's actually do that on our command line. And what I've done here is I just have a few files for us. I have in this folder something called big document doc doc and then a binary file. And then if we look, I've created a folder and inside there we have, you know, the same sort of thing, just a couple binary files and some text files. And these are what we're going to use to manipulate. So first I'm going to create a tar file, which is just an archive, all the stuff, you know, put together, not compressed of the, a folder of stuff. So we'll say tar, that's the command. And then dash C means create and then dash F and the name of the file I want to create. Remember, we're not writing it to a tape we're writing it to a file. And so the file I want to create is archive.tar. And then the last command is what is it we want to put in that tar command and, or in that tar file. And I want to put the folder, a folder of stuff, right? And then I press enter. And if we do LS, sure enough, there is archive.tar. And that is just the stuff that's in the folder of stuff that's titled a folder of stuff. <laughs> but I want to show you that it's the same exact size. If we do LS minus L, we're going to see that archive.tar is just about 500 uh, kilobytes here, right? It's just about half a megabyte. If we do now, it's okay that you don't know this command. This is just the disk usage command, uh, human readable terms, summarize a folder. All I'm doing here is uh, getting a, a listing of how big a folder and all of its stuff is. And sure enough here, it's 500 K. So there has been no compression that's taken place. It's just, we've created an archive. Okay. And then if we want to extract that archive. So let's uh, get rid of a folder of stuff. So now you see nothing up my sleeve. So we don't have that folder is gone now. But since we have that archive tar file, we can do tar. And now we're going to do x for extract, right? We're going to extract and then dash f archive tar. And now look at that, we have our folder full of stuff. And if we look inside of it, all of our things have been politely put back where they go. All right, so that's how tar works. But we also want to compress things, right? Because when we take a backup, it's silly to just waste all of that space on, uh, you know, a tar file when we could compress it and save some space and, you know, take that somewhere else. So I'm going to clear the screen. All right, what do we have in here? We still have the tar file. Okay. So now I actually want to, um, show you how we can use compression on a file itself. But first I want to show you a slide really quick because there are three main things that we're going to look at. We're going to look at gzip, bzip2, and xz. These are all different compression tools uh, that work on Linux. And there's actually a cool part that we're gonna talk about at the end here, but this is just a little grid of how we go about compressing and decompressing files using these three suites of tools, okay? This little uh, section at the bottom here, this is a uh, kind of a, cheater going or a spoiler going forward tar will actually do these commands itself as well so you can compress while you archive but 
at its core by itself, tar just makes archives. It doesn't compress. So I wanted to explain the compression and then we'll do it all together at the end. So we'll probably come back to this, but basically what we're looking at is like gzip and then the name of the file, it'll compress it. If we want to keep a copy of that original file, we have to do dash K. Otherwise it compresses it and deletes the original. Um, and then for decompressing, we'll use a D flag. And this is pretty consistent across the three different suites, how we go about doing it. So let's do that. We're gonna use that archive.tar as our test. Okay, so the first one I wanna look at is gzip, and I'm gonna do dash K because I want to keep reusing the archive.tar file, so that'll just keep it. So dash K just means keep the original. And we're going to gzip archive.tar, press enter. And now if you look, we have archive.tar.gz. All right, and check this out it has shrunk it quite a darn bit. So our original archive.tar is 500K. The shrunk one with gzip is 176K. So it's significantly smaller uh, to have a tar.gz, but we can do the same thing with, let's do bzip2. We're gonna do dash K again, we wanna keep it, archive.tar. And now we have an archive.tar.bz2, which again is just a different way to compress. I'm going to do the same thing with xz and then we will compare them. All right, so xz dash k archive.tar. And now let's clear the screen. Drum roll ls minus l. So let's see what we have here. We have the original archive.tar is 500k, archive.tar.gz is 176 bz2 the bzip2 got it all the way down to 149k but then check this out xz got it all the way down to 120k so they are better at compressing uh certain files like and certain algorithms are going to be better at compressing like text versus uh, binary data the, this folder was a combination of binary and text but anyway uh, we can compress them using different things and usually this is the order that it goes gzip is the oldest so it doesn't do as good of a job. Bzip2 is newer than Gzip. It compresses a little bit better. And then XZ is uh, kind of the newer kid on the block. It does a really good job usually of compressing things. All right, so we have those files compressed. Now to decompress them, uh, first of all, let's get rid of archive.tar now because we have many copies of it. Archive.tar. All right, so now we have just the compressed file. So now we're going to, there's two different ways that we can decompress them. Uh, for example, the, the gzip one, we can do gzip-d for decompress and the name of the file, archive.tar.gz. Or there's another command, gunzip or gunzip and then archive.tar.gz. All right, and that, it's the same exact thing. But we do that, and now if you look, we have archive.tar back, right? And it actually got rid of, it cleaned up after itself. There is no more GZ file in there. We just have the archive.tar. Uh, let's get rid of that again, archive.tar. And now let's do the same thing with the bzip2. And bzip2, same thing. There's two ways to do it. We could say bzip2-d archive.tar.bz2, and it will extract it. Um, or we could do bunzip, bunzip2 archive.tar.bz2. Same thing. There's our file back, archive.tar. It cleaned up after itself, and you know where we're going here, right? We're going to get rid of that archive.tar. And last one, this is a little bit uh, different, not, not much different, but xz-d, and then the name of it, that'll do it. Or the command that you can use if you don't want to use the dash z or dash d flag is unxz archive.tar.xz. And then sure enough, we're back to our original archive.tar. Now, here's the deal. This is the, the cool part. Tar will actually call those things and compress them all at once, all right? So let's do all of what we just did, but this time we're going to use tar to do it all in one step. Now, again, tar doesn't do the compressing. Tar calls that third-party tool and compresses it itself, but it doesn't actually do the compression. It uses the same tools that we just used. It just does it in one fell swoop. So let's clear this screen. Actually, let's, uh, what do we have here? Let's get rid of archive.tar because we still have that folder of stuff. So we can, uh, we can use that clear. All right. So we're back to the beginning where we were. Now I want to show you that slide really quick because down here, 
Oh, and I see my face was over the, this just says, uh, this says compress. Compress. So <laughs> this line shows us how to do compressing. So sorry for, I, I, my face covered up the word compress, but you probably figured that out anyway. Um, so the tar flag down here though, when we're compressing or decompressing with tar, uh, or archiving or de-archiving, extracting, that's the word, uh, we can add a flag dash Z and it will do gzip compression on the fly or dash lowercase j and it will do bzip2 compression on the fly or dash capital J and it will do xz compression on the fly. Why does it use J and capital J and Z? I don't know, maybe there were so many flags they kind of ran out, but we can do those on the command line and that's what we're gonna do. All right, so what we do is tar, again, tar just calls the others. We're gonna say dash C for create, dash Z for use gzip compression, dash F, the name of the file, and our file is going to be archive. Dot. Now, do you remember it added the tar.gz? That is a proper way to do it, but there are also some um, three character extensions that mean the same thing. So for a tar file that is gzipped, it's tgz, okay? We can do archive.tgz and every program will know that that is a tar gzipped file, or we can do tar dot gz both are acceptable one isn't better than the other that's just they're both accepted so i'll do tar dot gz and then what is it we want to add is a folder of stuff press enter ls minus l and here we go archive dot tar dot gz and it is 176 now if i remember correctly can i scroll i can't scroll up i think that it was a little bit smaller maybe not uh but the reason it might not be the exact same size as when we when we archived it and then compressed it is when you call the compression tool on its own, it might use different levels of compression by default. And how that works is if you say, I want a higher level of compression, it'll just crank longer and harder on the CPU. This is the settings that TAR uses, but this is a gzip file. Okay, so we can, uh, we can undo that with the g unzip or gunzip command or we can use tar to do it. So let's get rid of minus r a folder. All right, so we just have that archive.tgz file. Now, if we do tar dash x for extract dash z for gzip or ungzip, and then the name of the file, which is archive.tgz. Now, if we look, look at that, we have back all of our stuff. Okay, so that's how it works. And it works the same way with the other two. So let's, uh, let's see, uh, tar, da oh, we can also come like mush the flags together. So we can say tar dash C lowercase J F archive dot T B Z. I think that's the three letter. Let me Google that real quick. Yeah. T B Z. That is it. And then let's look at the and TXZ for the other. Exactly. Okay. So, uh, tar dash C for create, J for using BZIP2 compression. The file name is this, and what it is we want to add to it, which is a folder of stuff. And now we have the TBZ, which again is about 150K. So, that's about what it was when we did it in two step process. And lastly, tar dash C for create capital J for XZ compression. The name of the file is going to be archive.txz and that same folder. And there we have all of those three files again, and it's down to 120K. Now, one thing I wanna point out, if you mush them together like this, like see how this is mushed together with, instead of dash C, dash J, dash F, if you mush them like this, make sure the very last one is F because F requires an argument after it, right? It's after the F, you have to say the name of the file. So if we did like dash F C J, that would not work because we have to have immediately after the F, the name of the file. So you can mush them together like this. It's a lot easier to write, but you have to be careful to make sure that F is the last one because it immediately afterwards has to have the name of the file. All right, let's get rid of all the archives. We know how to do that now. RM archive star 
or we're back to the beginning of what we had. And now I just want to show you really quickly how to use zip and unzip because Linux does use zip and unzip and it does the compression and the archiving all in one step, just like it does on windows. So LS, we have a folder of stuff. We can just say zip the name of the zip file. So for us, that's going to be archive.zip and what it is we want to add to it, a folder of stuff. Oh, and you know what I didn't do? I didn't say recursive. We have to do recursive uh, because if we look now, look how small that is. Oh, it's 186 bytes. That's because it compressed the folder and nothing inside the folder. So that was a mistake on my part. I'm glad I made so that you can learn from, from my error. We want to do zip dash R for recursively add the name of the thing, archive.zip. I did that part right. And then a folder of stuff. And then it will add all of the stuff. And if we look, ls minus l, it looks like archive.zip is going to be just about as efficient as tar.gz. Uh, but that is the, the archive with zip. And then to unzip it, uh, let's say we can get rid of a folder of stuff. Oop, rm, that's recursive. A folder of stuff, clear the screen. We have, that's what we have. So if we want to unzip it, we just say unzip archive.zip and look, there it is. So we have our stuff back I'll, just to make sure that I did it right. Sure enough, our stuff is in there. <laughs> okay. I know that it's very similar to use gzip and bzip2 and xz, but it's important to note that you might find different uh, archives out there on the internet. You might download um, something.tar.xz. Uh, that same thing might be called something.txz. So it's it's really important to know the differences and know what's going on. Uh, but when you are creating archives and compressed archives on your own, you can use whatever method you want, truly. Um, I usually do tar.gz just because it sticks in my head. It's been, I've been doing this a long time. It's not the highest compression, but it's very compatible. Um, and it it usually is enough space isn't as much of a premium as it used to be so i'll just generally do a tar.gz or or tgz file myself but again any of them are fine they're all very very um compatible uh, with other systems etc cetera, etc cetera. the only thing being that if you try to send like a windows user something that is like uh xz compressed they might not be able to extract it unless they get something like 7-zip on their windows computer anyway that is compression and archiving on linux it's easy it's it's kind of fun i'm not gonna lie it's it's fun to do that stuff and it's a great way to uh, get in the habit of backing stuff up and remember learn everything do what you love and most importantly be kind. If you have something else you want to learn later on when we finish this course, let me know in the comments because I'm going to make a list of all the things that we can do in the future together to make ourselves super nerds, which is a good thing. Trust me. I'll see you next time.